Bank of Souls, refers to the concept that there exists a metaphysical repository or collective consciousness where human souls are stored before birth and after death. This idea is rooted in various spiritual and philosophical beliefs, such as reincarnation, which suggests that the soul is an eternal entity that transcends a single lifetime. Proponents of this concept believe that the Bank of Souls acts as a kind of way station or intermediary realm between the physical world and the afterlife, where souls await their next incarnation or ultimate destination. Some spiritual traditions, such as Hinduism and Buddhism, incorporate the idea of a soul repository in their cosmologies, with the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth governed by karmic laws and the soul's journey towards enlightenment. Certain New Age and esoteric philosophies propose that the Bank of Souls is accessible to humans through deep meditation, past life regression, or other spiritual practices, allowing individuals to tap into the collective wisdom and experiences of all souls. The notion of a Bank of Souls also appears in some works of fiction and popular culture, often depicted as a supernatural realm or a place of judgment where souls are weighed and assigned their next incarnation based on their past actions. The idea that our souls are part of a greater whole, and that our experiences and actions in this life may have consequences that extend beyond our mortal existence, provides a compelling framework for understanding the mysteries of life, death, and spirituality. BDORT, or Bi-Digital O-Ring Test, refers to a controversial alternative diagnostic method developed by a Japanese researcher and acupuncturist. According to proponents of BDORT, the strength or weakness of a person's O-ring, formed by touching the tips of the thumb and another finger, can indicate the presence of various health issues, nutritional deficiencies, or even the effectiveness of certain treatments. The theory behind BDORT suggests that the human body emits electromagnetic fields that can be detected and interpreted by a skilled practitioner who applies pressure to the O-ring while the patient holds specific substances or is exposed to certain stimuli. Advocates of BDORT claim that the method can diagnose a wide range of conditions, from allergies and infections to more serious illnesses like cancer, by observing changes in the resistance of the O-ring. Some practitioners combine BDORT with other alternative therapies, such as acupuncture or homeopathy, to develop personalized treatment plans based on the patient's specific diagnostic results. While BDORT has gained popularity among some alternative health enthusiasts, it lacks scientific evidence to support its efficacy and is not recognized as a valid diagnostic tool by the mainstream medical community. Critics argue that the results of BDORT are subjective and may be influenced by the practitioner's bias or the patient's subconscious reactions, leading to misdiagnosis or delayed treatment of serious conditions. Proponents of BDORT maintain that the method's ability to provide quick, non-invasive insights into a person's health status makes it a valuable tool for holistic and preventative medicine, particularly in cases where conventional diagnostic tests may be inconclusive or unavailable. The Beacon of Hate refers to a theory about a hidden psychological warfare facility. Some believe this secret installation exists in an undisclosed location, potentially underground or in a remote area. Proponents claim it houses advanced technology capable of broadcasting negative emotions and harmful thoughts across vast distances. The alleged purpose is to manipulate populations by inducing fear, anger, and division on a mass scale. Supporters point to unexplained mood shifts in communities, increased social tensions, and patterns of conflict as potential evidence. Some researchers argue that certain radio frequencies or electromagnetic signals could theoretically influence human behavior and emotions. Declassified government documents on past mind control experiments like MKUltra lend credence to the idea that such research may have continued in secret. Believers suggest that the facility may be operated by a shadow government or elite group seeking to maintain control through manufactured chaos. Beatles never existed refers to the conspiracy theory that suggests the iconic British rock band, the Beatles, were not a real group, but rather a cultural construct or a fabricated entity. 
Proponents of this theory argue that the individual members of the Beatles, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr, were actors or musicians hired to portray the band members, while the real creative force behind the music was a team of songwriters and studio musicians. Some believers in this theory point to supposed inconsistencies or anomalies in the band's history, such as the Paul is Dead urban legend, as evidence that the official narrative surrounding the Beatles is not entirely truthful. They also cite the band's rapid rise to international fame and their massive cultural impact as being too extraordinary to be attributed to a single group of musicians, suggesting that there must have been a larger, orchestrated effort behind their success. Certain conspiracy theorists even propose that the Beatles were a creation of the British government or intelligence agencies, designed to influence youth culture and promote specific social or political agendas. While these claims may seem far-fetched to most people, the enduring fascination with the Beatles and the mythological status they have achieved in popular culture has led some to question the very nature of their reality. However, the vast majority of music historians, cultural analysts, and fans reject the notion that the Beatles never existed, pointing to the wealth of documentary evidence, eyewitness accounts, and the band members' own testimonies as proof of their authenticity. The idea that a group as influential and well-documented as the Beatles could be a fabrication stretches credulity for most, but the persistence of this conspiracy theory demonstrates the power of iconoclastic thinking and the human tendency to seek hidden truths behind cultural phenomena. This refers to a popular children's book series and the related conspiracy theory known as the Mandela Effect, which suggests that the name of the series has mysteriously changed from Berenstein to Berenstain in an alternate reality or timeline. Many people who grew up reading these books in the 1980s and 1990s distinctly remember the name being spelled as Berenstein, with an E, rather than the current spelling, Berenstain, with an A. Proponents of this theory argue that the discrepancy in the spelling is evidence of a shift in our collective reality, or a glitch in the matrix, indicating that we may be living in a parallel universe, or that our memories have been altered by some unknown force. Some believers in the Mandela Effect point to the widespread nature of this specific memory discrepancy, with numerous people across different age groups and locations reporting the same inconsistency as a compelling reason to consider the possibility of alternate realities. Skeptics, however, argue that the Berenstein versus Berenstain discrepancy is simply a case of misremembering or confabulation, where the human brain fills in gaps in memory with false information that feels familiar or plausible. They point out that the Berenstain spelling has been consistently used throughout the series' publication history and that there is no concrete evidence to support the idea of a reality shift or alternate timeline. Nonetheless, the persistence of this shared false memory and the fervor with which some people believe in the Berenstein spelling has made the Berenstein Bears a prime example of the Mandela effect and a fascinating case study in the fallibility and suggestibility of human memory. Berry Bushes, Missing People Theory, refers to a concept proposed by David Paulides, a former police detective and researcher, who has investigated numerous cases of individuals who have mysteriously disappeared in national parks and wilderness areas. Paulides has noted a recurring theme in many of these disappearances, the presence of berry bushes or berry picking locations near the site where the person was last seen. He suggests that there may be a connection between these berry bushes and the disappearances proposing that some unknown entity or force could be using the bushes as a lure or a portal to another dimension. While this theory may seem far-fetched, Paulides points to the unusual circumstances surrounding many of these cases, such as the lack of evidence or tracks left behind, the failure of search dogs to pick up a scent, and the fact that many of the missing individuals seem to vanish without a trace. Some believers in this theory speculate that the berry bushes could be a marker or a signpost for an interdimensional doorway, a sort of natural portal that allows passage between our world and another realm. Others propose that the berry bushes might be a food source or attractant for an unknown predator, 
possibly of extraterrestrial or supernatural origin, that is responsible for the disappearances. Paulides has compiled his research into a series of books titled Missing 411, which documents the strange and unexplained disappearances in national parks and wilderness areas, often highlighting the proximity of berry bushes to the last known location of the missing person. 